All right, everyone. Welcome to the Always Moving Podcast. I'm your host, Lyndon Savanto, as always. And today, we have one of the funniest, most handsomest guys you'll ever meet. And he's talking to Dushan Christich, his guest today. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? <laughs> oh, it's going good, but enough about me. How are you doing? I'm good, man. <laughs> Quarantine's a little, it's a little weird, but... Uh, yeah. You know. I'm not doing wait. anything again. That's great. Well, I'm trying to do like, I'm trying to learn like little things while I can. So I've took, uh, I bought Photoshop for a month, trying to learn that. There's like a 30 day like tutorial thing on YouTube. Yeah, and I'm trying to learn some uh, website building stuff. Like I got to do something. Yeah, I'm sitting the, at home. Thing. Like before I got uh, working with this job, I did the pro serve. For you no did reason. that? <laughs> <laughs> for like no reason. Dude, I... Maybe yeah. I can just serve booze one day, <laughs> but now I've got it, and then it's kind of went. Remember for the when we were younger? It would be like, oh man, if this was quarantining and I was like in school, I'd be like, oh baby, like I can do whatever I want, and I would just game, I would watch TV, and I'd do yeah. this. Now I feel like I'm wasting time. Oh yeah, every day when I'm not doing something, it's just like, well, I'm wasting my life. You see someone online, and they're like, yeah, side hustle this. I'm like, oh fuck, I don't have a side. Yeah, well, you gotta, yeah, I gotta get a side hustle. What are you rubbing in my face, dude? <laughs> yeah, but back off, unfollow instantly. What about getting an OnlyFans? Do you think guys can get? famous off that I off think. like feet pics and stuff said, probably i've seen your feed and that's they're not great they're but they're bad. unique <laughs> they're unique oh yeah like it's like splayed <laughs> yeah they're like yeah i don't know what it is they're rigid <laughs> rigid and splayed i don't know that's very sexy be, that's a niche, <laughs> there's got, that's a niche. <laughs> so yeah so basically like what you said was like gaming and playing or like watching movies and shit and it's just like when we're younger yeah that's awesome and then now it's like well looks like i'm watching a movie tonight <laughs> i was constantly thinking when i was younger i'm like oh, i'm excited like i'm gonna watch this one. Oh, i haven't seen this i haven't seen this now you have like a million options man it's just yeah. like oh i'm gonna i find myself i'll put on a movie and then i'll be thinking about whether or not i should have put on a different movie yeah, okay. and then like five <laughs> minutes in i'm like Ah, let me go back. Let me check some more movies. Like, I just want to like scroll yeah. through shit and never choose anything and then be like, all right, well, now I'm going to bed. <laughs> or just throw on something you've seen a million times. Always, yeah, yeah. Then I don't have to think. I can just throw on whatever. Yeah. yeah. When I, I'd say one of my finest things that I finally got around to watching, and there was no reason I hadn't watched it, but The Cable Guy. God, that movie rocks. You've never watched The Cable Guy before? Well, I watched it when I was younger, but I didn't remember it. And then I watched it and I'm like, this movie rocks. And then I, I watched it like three times in a week. I got my parents to watch it. it just really? Like, yeah. Dude, I haven't seen that in forever. And I, re I just remember people ragging on it. Yeah, because I don't know, it was darker, but I thought it was hilarious. I was loving like Jim Carrey's this creepy kind He was of a little creepy. Yeah, that's stuff. all like, I remember. Yeah, he's such a like, weirdo. And it's totally that type of humor that I think you would love it. Yeah, I'm going to rewatch it. <laughs> I was trying to get in like a Jim Carrey kick after I haven't seen like his movies in a long time. And then I watched, uh, watched Ace Ventura and oh. I was like, Oh man, because I listened to him on Conan's podcast yeah, yeah. and then they were just talking about like how these to film stuff and SNL. And that like, yeah. just gets me like into like, want to watch like every one of his movies. Cause like when I just, I put up the cable guy on just in my room and I'm like, wow, this is the greatest. <laughs> like, it, was just, it was one of those times. Like, and then I'm like right after it was I watched Yes Man I watched everything I could find on Netflix. Yeah, on well, Netflix, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, oh yeah. damn, like why can't I find this or this? But okay, what are your what would you top three Jim Carrey movies? Oh well, you gotta go Dumb and Dumber and Ace Ventura. Dumb and Dumber. Okay, see, I don't know if Ace Ventura would be my in my top because like Dumb and Dumber for sure, but like The Grinch has to be in there. Yeah, not not for me. That's not. Oh, not for me. fuck! I gotta put in the any Christmas movie, <laughs> like any related, like. <laughs> damn. One, um, what, I just completely draw a blank right now. One of the ones I love from just how random it is, is the mask. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Okay, mask is top three. I got that in. Uh, I didn't think this through too much. Oh no, <laughs> clearly because like, I wasn't ready for this. But I, I got a DVD of the mask in like a corn pops box. Yeah. That's when you could get DVDs what? in like the cereal. The corn I pops had, box had mask. I got the mask. I got Airbud one and Spy Kids one. 
all just in uh, cereal boxes. That's literal gold. Yeah, oh yeah. What is, do they even give toys in cereal boxes anymore? I don't I, think so. I think it's probably all like go online and do some bullshit. Online. Oh yeah, it is some BS online it's, for sure. S- scan this QR code. Yeah, and like <laughs> we always talk about it, like owning the Simpsons seasons is so much better than going to like Disney Plus and watching it all. I'd rather take a huge chunk of my room like this putting box me too uh, like looking at that stuff i i realized i haven't watched a disc in a long time and then um i don't know what the reason was but i had to put in like one of the discs because i guess i couldn't access disney plus or anything for yeah, the yeah. simpsons and it was season two and it was when before you can get to the menu you have to click four times where yeah, their yeah. head like spins and oh, like, yeah. <laughs> stuff that else. I was like oh my god i forgot about this i was like <laughs> i miss just putting on the dvds yeah and just you see the menu because i've recently watched season eight and yeah. it's just you know there's like a character from each episode standing in front of the house and then they'll yeah. just like hey what are you doing or they'll do like, a, like throw in a little yeah. ad lib yeah. yeah i just love it so it's, I was yeah it's also good background the other day too. Yeah. it was um did I ever tell you how i watched uh when the dvd of the simpsons movie came out i watched it all three times in one night so I, I like just i had a portable dvd player in my room yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like a little like open up blah blah blah. so it's like yeah, that's yeah. all we had so i was playing that i watched it once then i watched the second time with actor commentary <laughs> then i watched the third time with uh, director commentary all in one night so I just sat in my room for like six hours straight just grilling it just loving it yeah man I love hearing the commentary stuff because it's like they'll discuss about like process and like how they did stuff and then it makes you like sort of like relate where you'd be like oh oh that's that's what they did they don't yeah, it's like yeah, nothing yeah. special you know it's like but it is special but it's also yeah not I don't know how to explain it like oh we spent hours on this and then we're just about to go home and then some guy says one thing and then it yeah. just clicks like that's who it is <laughs> yeah it's like, it's like well I could do that can't I <laughs> right <laughs> it's like that but then oh man if you get a bunch of good people together i'm sure like people just spitball and like it works out like a bunch of comedians together yeah. there's no way they can't make a good thing to watch yeah or you'll get a couple laughs at least there's enough stuff i watch that i don't give any laughs to so exactly give me like five laughs exactly. and you instantly jump ahead done if if, <laughs> if i watch like a show and if i don't get like a laugh out loud within like the first I'd say two to four episodes, I might not like continue yeah, the show. Tough. But if I like laugh, I'm like, okay, you pretty much hooked me for the rest of yeah, like yeah. the series. Cause like if you can make me laugh once like that, I'm expecting more. Well, cause that was kind of the thing when I tried to get you to watch Parks and Rec. And mm-hmm. like season one of Parks and Rec is like, it's not great. And then yeah. you just power through it and you hear that everywhere. It's like once you get through it the, is, the yeah, beginning, it's it's, everyone loves it, but you just got to get through that beginning. So that's like, what happened to me with the office i remember starting the office I and then i couldn't get past I can't. three episodes <laughs> and the funny thing is when i restarted it like five years into the future the first three episodes sucked again for me but the fourth episode was the one that made me laugh out loud so if like five years before that i watched the fourth episode yeah, i would have been like okay part, sweet yeah. watch Here the whole office series. yeah and that's we always we always like talk about it how we kind of Especially, I think we said we wanted like dementia and stuff so that we could rewatch something for the first time. <laughs> yeah, if I could and, just choose selectively to like forget a whole thing, just that's it. And that's like one of the nice things with the quarantine is like my parents just forget everything. They don't know what yeah. they've seen anymore. So like the other day, <laughs> the other day we watched Superbad. They're like, oh, I don't even remember that. And they were just laughing the whole time. I'm like, curse my perfect memory. <laughs> <laughs> oh man curse the man who invented helium curse pierre <laughs> god it's not even wars anymore thank you very much for him, christopher <laughs> like if, if, if there was a say like a tv show and a movie what would you completely forget to watch over for the first time because for me it'd be i'd love to rewatch all the simpsons but then i don't know because half of the old ones is like nostalgia exactly that's why i'm scared if i would like time. if yeah. if it, would i rewatch it and have like the same effect as i did i don't know because I, I wouldn't want to ruin my nostalgia things what i would for example would be like give me the dark night i'll like rewind that rewatch and just be like oh just blown away <laughs> something that blows you away that you don't expect yeah, yeah. movies like that i'd be like all right let's go shutter island forget it dark yeah. night forget it 
the hangover like i, I, I can saw, do it with comedies like anything like the dark knight like four times in theaters yeah i think that was the one i saw the most in theaters i think i saw avatar like three times and i saw the dark knight like four times the dark knight i saw the first time in spokane i was on a basketball trip with uh, my high school team yeah and i was so shook like at the <laughs> end of that movie that i left my string bag on the on the chair next to me in the movie theater and yeah. had my wallet, my citizenship, <laughs> anything I needed, like just, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> I couldn't handle it, dude. I was blown away. Like, oh, I remember I was thinking about this, of like two of the moments in like movies where I was just like shocked, like absolutely shocked was um, one was in the dark night and it's when he's like, I'll make this pencil disappear. And he goes and he smashes that guy's head in. I'm like, okay, this Joker's amazing. Like, uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, oh, man. There's so many times after in, in class where I try to stab a pencil into the <laughs> into a desk just to be like, come here, let me show you a sweet trick. Oh. And then I yeah. remember it, it was a good movie and it was a, a remake of a classic, but the new, the first one of the new run of Planet of the Apes. And when when Caesar's getting know what like, you're gonna tortured say. by that yeah. guy in the zoo and he just screams out no I was like okay dude <laughs> what the hell just goosebumps in the theater bro yeah I was just the confused. same effect as at the end of Dark Knight when like he says that little speech and then the music goes off and he's like <laughs> oh man yeah dude when, when chills screams, no chills. I was legit like, <laughs> yeah okay it's those I kind of moments man. man like I want to rewind that kind of shit yeah so like those are the two biggest ones, and then, yeah, like there's a I have all kinds of memories in like the theaters and stuff when you see a movie or the scenario when you see a movie because I remember we went as like a family when we all still lived together, mm -hmm. and my brother, my parents, and I went to the theaters and none of us could agree on a show to watch like on a movie to watch, so my brother went to see the brother Solomon. Like the, it's like Will Arnett and I think Will Forte. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, what? They're like okay, okay. Some shit. I've never even seen it. And my parents went to see some crappy movie because they tend to. And I went by myself, packed theater, filled with just like parents and their kids to Ratatouille. And I'm just nobody wanted to go to Ratatouille no, except for and, you. And I saw it. I think it was like North Side. It was like a cheap theater. And like I'm in this thing. I'm the only like non-family guy. I'm by there by myself. And I'm like wow this is the best <laughs> like damn i love how you guys split up well because we couldn't agree and it's just like you know what go your crappy fuck dream. you guys <laughs> <laughs> you're punching ratatouille and my, my parents this is the worst like, family day ever like they probably saw like knights and rodanth with like rich oh. gear <laughs> and like <God laughs> and then oh. i don't know ryan was dead set on fucking the brother solomon and then i went to ratatouille i don't know just one i would have i, I would have picked family. ratatouille with you for sure yeah, so Man, you can never pick wrong with a Pixar movie. Legit though, and like I'm pretty sure when it was in theaters, it had all the hype and this thing for sure animated movie of the year, but no one wanted to see it except God for Lindy. Damn, I want to rewatch Ratatouille like right after this now. Oh, I gotta tell you, my mom and I started watching uh, the Toy Story series because she's yeah. never seen anything other than the first one, and she didn't remember the first one at all. So we just watched number one yesterday, but. It came up because there was like a list of like best Pixar movies and Toy Story 3 popped up frequently on like people's top five yeah. and I, I couldn't really remember it and she told me she's never watched it and I was like oh well do you want to watch with me let's do it can't go wrong with the Pixar movie it's like for all ages yeah yeah, yeah. you can watch it as like a four-year-old to like everybody. 75 yeah. like 80 years old doesn't matter they killed it with those movies. Oh man, Toy Story three! I I didn't even I haven't watched Toy Story four yet. I did. It's not as good. Doesn't hit the same. I just feel like Toy Story three had the perfect ending. I know. That's I think that might be like part it. of the reason why four isn't. But like, yeah, and that's I don't one know. of the ones like I'm just sitting there crying. Kate, like okay, that's the other thing. I don't remember like a fridge, and I'm just me. bawling my eyes out watching the because like. When we're like really young kids, that movie was just out, and like we grew up with Toy Story. And then, yeah, when we go and we see, and then you know, they get passed on from Andy to that little girl, and it's just like, oh, okay. that was like 
the saddest part was when they get passed on. Yeah. But her, people kept saying that the part when they were like about to go it into that furnace. And now, yeah. to me, I was like not sad at that part because I was like, there's no, there's no <laughs> way they're killing characters. these. <laughs> <laughs> they're not doing it right. So like, I wasn't sad because like, it's, yeah, there's just no chance. But yeah. the part where they had to like move on and give the yeah. toys away and like and make some other little girl happy, I was like, this is awesome. I'm not giving my toys away ever though. No, I got fuck I'm that. I'm hoarding a collection all my behind me, man. All <laughs> <laughs> you village, you always walk through and look for some Disney Pixar yeah. thing, and then I'm gonna burn it. it all on live stream before I die. Yeah, it's yeah, gonna fuck. be it's gonna piss so many people off, it's and it's gonna be most make me just video. go <laughs> nice in peace. Oh, it'd be great. No one I pissed off so many people. <laughs> <laughs> I've already burned all these bridges by then. <laughs> But uh, I think Toy Story 3 hits, like, like the ending hit the most. Because it's, like, anything with friends, like, friendship. And, like, the friendship triumphs or they move on or some shit. That one just kills me every time. Like, even, like, rated R comedies. And, like, Seth Rogen and someone will make up at yeah. the end. And you're just like, that's yeah. the end. <laughs> like, <laughs> what always, I always got hit the hardest by, like like father son stuff in yeah. like the movies so coco would like was the one that that was that one was the one that set it off for me i used to like i used to watch movies and never ever cry in movies i was like okay whatever except yeah. for spider-man 3 when i was younger <laughs> but that was like super emotional it's the end of an era and i was like upset but then i didn't cry for a very long time and then i watched coco in theaters with my mom no less <laughs> and end of the movie man i would just waterfall and i was trying to sit perfectly straight and be like oh my god like this needs to stop i gotta think about sports i gotta think about something else because this is like everything was just like at once and then after that dude doesn't matter what pixar movie it was doesn't matter if it's like the slightest little emotional thing i was just it's like i've opened up like (laughs) a can you broke that dam and like it's it's fucked yeah and like for me it's beauty and the beast for some reason beauty and the beast has killed me every time i've seen it I went to see some movie where it was like a 3D movie. We have the glasses and there's a preview for Disney being re-released in theaters. And I, I got these glasses. The preview. I got the, I got the glasses <laughs> on and you just see a tear come down under my glasses. And I'm just like, oh, I got to get some popcorn. <laughs> God, I got <gotta. laughs> so it. That, that one kills me every time, man. And like um, when the new one got released, like the live action. I saw it in France at the theater and there was yeah. like, a, like an acting group from the city and they were dressed up as the characters and they gave out, Sick. they gave out roses to everyone in the crowd. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like okay. I'm going to cry before the movie even starts. <laughs> like, Damn, man. So yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was one of those things. But then what, uh, what like non animated movies made you cry? Cause that one's like, I'm trying to think, <laughs> and that one's like way harder. It's like any animated movie is like almost like oh, a tearjerker. I, I, I could give you a big old list of those ones. It's give me, give like, me, give me some. Well, like for me, my favorite movie is Big Fish, which you know. Oh fuck! So, okay, like, you're big gonna fish say Big Fish. Me, yeah. and that's the father son <laughs> thing, and whatever. But, but yeah, that one is fucking adorable, man. That's the thing, man. It's that I think the tagline for the movies is something like an adventure bigger than life itself, and that's. That's something that always like stuck with me when it's like, oh, you have the chance to go move to some country. Edward Bloom would do Dude, it. Big do Fish it. is so like you. Yeah, the, I feel like after I, I rewatched I mean, that, yeah, because I watched that with you, right? Yeah. And I was a little bit younger at the time, and I watched it. I loved it, but like I rewatched it. It was on TV, and I'm pretty sure it was either this year or last year. And I was watching it, and I couldn't stop thinking. I'm like, this guy's just Lyndon. I'm like, this yeah. is Lyndon. I'm like, no, Lyndon is like literally trying to embody everything that yeah, and, this yeah. character is. That's why it's my favorite. And I just want to yeah. be Edward Bloom, man. I fucking love it. And yeah. That's what, uh, after that, I had, I was like, okay, no wonder this is Lyndon's favorite movie. <laughs> and then it made me think about my favorite movie, The Way, Way Back. And I was like, okay, yeah. no wonder that's my favorite movie. Cause like, I want to be like that one character yeah. that Sam Rockwell plays. So it's like, whoever you see yourself like most like, yeah. it's just yeah. like, a connection and like for when i saw it in theater not big fish but i saw wreck it ralph the first one in theaters yeah. 
and I felt like I really connected with Ralph. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, Ralph gets me, you know, like I'm, God. I'm kind of the big idiot who okay, messes okay. up or something. And then it's like, you know, I had to prove myself that I would say worthy of a certain thing or whatnot. And I'm just like, man, I'm Ralph. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. like, but big fish was the one that like, damn has resonated with me. Every, I can watch it anytime, anywhere. And yeah, I just want to be Edward Bloom. So that's why I just try to be Edward Bloom. I'm like a president's choice version. <laughs> but then oh. there's a, I talked about it in an earlier podcast. There's a documentary called Last Goal Wins or Next Goal Wins. Okay. About the American Samoa soccer team. And they, were, and they were ranked dead last in the world. And they had the record for the worst loss in World Cup qualifying history okay they got thrashed by australia like 18 nothing or some something crazy like that yeah so then this american coach joins signs with american samoa for the qualifiers and they have a transgender player on their team who i've actually talked to i, 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 I like sent yeah her, you told me about this yeah. so I, I talked to her and then the goalie for the team was also the goalie during the worst loss so mm-hmm. he comes back to try to you know a fight for some you know respect and stuff and they go through the qualifier they find a couple guys in the u.s with uh citizenship and then it's just like this growth is the team and then they play some games and they get their first win or the one guy scores a goal and it's i watched this right after pan am games too so it was like oh man that road to getting to this thing it just it killed me and i'm on the i watched it on a plane too so i'm already like in the chair on the plane like this and I'm just, stewardess goes by, and I'm just crying my eyes out. And she just looks at me like, what the fuck is this guy? Cut this guy off. But How did they come up with, like, I feel like we could have done, a, if we just recorded a crap ton of, like, our Anything. Alberta team handball stuff and mm-hmm. our, like, trips, we could have done, like, a nice little documentary. Yeah. It would have been like, cool to make. I, I like when I watched that and stuff and I thought about what could it have been and it was uh, for me it would be like my junior Man, team career your junior team <laughs> my junior team Man. career because every year I had almost like six new players and like a new coach and every year we'd screw it up we'd screw it up it, and my final yeah, year there was of always junior, like a rag tag of like yeah, just my final like year of junior we finally extremes, won Man. that's right yeah in the last game, I won. That was my MVP, first year. Of I won the like we won the gold, and it was like we did it. All the shit we did, because you could go to the clips where Doug made us run in the rain, running yeah. stairs in the river valley, and like all the bullshit we did to get to that one final thing in junior, and we did it. Like we did it. So that's what I would make that documentary on. But that's a long time. That's a, yeah, that would have been that would have been a great one actually for sure. Because like there's so many lovable characters there. Yeah. And so many and, and, unlovable characters. Oh, yeah, like Shaq. <laughs> like Shaq, Shaq, Shaq and Garrett. And, you know. Garrett, Garrett's the worst. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but that Adam Haver was great. <laughs> oh man, we had a lot of random characters, people. man. And like, <laughs> as you play for one year, and you learn about them, and then they're just you never hear from them ever again. Never, yeah. <laughs> Remember those good. practices back then? Those were like we have like two balls at McNally, and that's it. Yeah, that's when I would just be what a shit show. Birdies <laughs> you guys are like trying to pass. How the fuck did we win gold that year, man? <laughs> oh. so like we were just smashed. Like Doug was making the most random drills for the goalies. <laughs> I don't know what you guys were doing. Yeah, you guys were ready for anything, bro. Oh, like I <laughs> took a ball out and just started throwing frisbees at us. I got it, man. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Good times. <clears throat> And then the one thing I was going to switching like mm-hmm. pop completely back to like uh, when we we're talking about like our collection of toys and stuff we don't want to get rid of. You've got a pretty sizable comic collection and graphic novels and shit. I do. Yeah. It actually like almost takes <laughs> over your room. <laughs> it do, I, I started cleaning up a little bit, but uh, it's still taking over my room. Look at this. Yeah. Do you have any idea like how many you have? Are you like that kind of collector? You know all of it? Uh, I know the important ones. <laughs> I don't know the quantity. So I do know like a lot of the key ones. Like uh, I always brag about this because it's like a stock investment. 
That was my favorite thing. Back in, uh, I can't remember what the year was, but basically, you know, Miles Morales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like the first African American Peter Park, Peter Parker, I guess Miles Morales himself. But he came out, uh, and it was his first appearance. And I bought five issues of that one because yeah. I was like, okay, this is going to be a big valuable deal. now, right? right? Oh, dude, <laughs> now I go online and graded ones are like seven hundred and fifty. So it's like. I can sell like four of them right now for like 2,800 bucks, but I'm sure even more in the future, he's become like a bigger and bigger character throughout yeah, yeah. like all of Marvel. It's got to be worth like way more money later. That's sweet, man. But I don't even want to sell it because I'm like, oh. Well, that's like a five of them. That's, it's right. Just I can sell, sell three and hold on. It's like a little, you know? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just sell one off every time I'm desperate. Like I lose my job or some crap. Like, all right. All gambling. Oh, yeah. crap. <laughs> Need more gambling money. Yeah. And that's what I tried to do. Like this year, I bought some. Uh, they're before they got selected, but like the NBA rookie cars. But you they're not those? like they're not like the actual with their teams they got selected by. It's them in college. But I still I bought yeah. a pack just for shits and gigs. Yeah, so I, when they're they expensive. Ha- those packs though. Where'd you get them? I got that pack. It was at Walmart. <clears throat> and How was, much? It's their college ball, and I think it was it was like fifteen dollars. But that's. I, but it was like, I think I got like twenty cards or something like that. At uh, the coin Edmonton West Edmonton coin and stamp, if you want to get a booster pack of basketball cards, guess guess I'll tell you over or under your guess for how much it is. One pack. How many cards come in that? Like fifteen. Oh, it's probably like fucking seventy dollars. Ooh, wow. Well, it's under that, but that's a fucking <laughs> good guess. It's like 40, 44 bucks, I think. I was like, for one pack? Like, yeah, why? You get, you get that stud. Yeah, but like, that's never, like, you don't, that's, <sighs> you're not <laughs> supposed to anticipate, <laughs> like, that's so weird. But the reasoning that guy told me is that mm-hmm. all, like, uh, because of COVID and stuff, all, like, the card producers, like, stopped making cards for, like, th- this run. Yeah. So they're pricing up all their, it soft, might be like the it? last times they even make they might go out of business so they're pricing them up like so high and i was like well i kind of want to buy it for that reason but also <laughs> hell no i'm not dropping 45 bucks on like 15 pieces of paper true if it was a comic but, that's a different story yeah but that, Gret- <laughs> that gretzky card just sold for over a million dollars what so you get a rookie who just out of nowhere becomes a super stud like if robert woodard the third becomes an absolute dynamo i got like three of his cards in that pack <laughs> Ooh. I don't even know who he plays for. I don't even know who that is. But I got okay. two Denny Avdia cards. Oh, that's yeah. sick. So okay, he's not a bust, you know. Yeah, flip him for five bucks down the road. <laughs> oh, but like, yeah, it's crazy what when you see something online that people are selling that they collected, and then you're like, man, I am pretty sure I had that. <laughs> I try to think about that every time I was Pokemon cards and shit. Like I used to have so many cards and they were all like when I was a kid. So that's like the first wave. I just, uh, I was in Banff this weekend and I just bought a, I went to their candy shop and they had a crap ton of Pez dispensers. Yeah. And I had to buy like a Venom one. I was like, I feel like people are not going to know what, or they're going to stop making Pez stuff in like 10 to 15 years. And then it's going to be one of those old like collectible, like from the time yeah yeah pieces. like you see at an antique store that yeah you, like you and i was in seeing and buying exactly like, oh yeah. look at this <laughs> i just wanted to have like one or two pez like unopened that i can just hold on to yeah. well like that thing you got me back there the uh james bond jr <laughs> odd job <laughs> toy <laughs> i odd job i love those like Rose just out hat, of nowhere man. like Rose's hat. <laughs> crazy <clears throat> yeah so it's pretty cool Every time yeah. I go to your house, I always see like your collection. I'm like, you think he'd notice if I took like ten of these? <laughs> Depends which ones I'd notice for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are kind of displayed, like, oh, that's missing. Yeah. Oh, I've seen to be missing four picture frames with comics <laughs> that used to be in there. You just replace them with like some other comics, like I wouldn't notice. <laughs> yeah, Green Goblin '85. How did you know? <laughs> that doesn't even exist. <laughs> Do you like that uh, Simpsons comics number one I got you? Yeah, it's up there too. That's fucking so sick, man. It's up behind Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear. Stark yeah. man. 
Well, like this one here, I bought a Edmonton Trappers pennant and like yeah. James Bond Junior odd job up there. It's yeah, like, it's just cool to have. You got a Trappers thing? I got a Trappers ball from a foul ball that was hit fucking like twenty years ago. It was probably Jason Giambi. It was probably. There's no way to prove it wasn't. They exactly. Didn't, like, film the games, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Giambi signed Trappers ball. That's like a rookie ball. Actually, that would be nuts. Get him to sign it. If you could somehow get Giambi to sign that ball, boom. <laughs> Dude, that'd be so sick, actually, yeah. Huh. I'll think about it. I, I was looking at, like, I wanted, I like getting stuff that was signed or whatever. Yeah. I was looking at uh, signed books, not like comic books, but just authors or whatever, like, okay, J.K. Rowling signed this or Tolkien yeah. signed this. Shit is expensive as fuck. <laughs> oh, I can imagine, especially like Tolkien or somebody. Ex- yeah, cause you can't get, they don't like do a lot of signings, I'm guessing, or whatever. Yeah, like with comic book guys, they ha- they go to comic cons, so there's always like a lot of signed books by like people. But yeah, I guess they don't sign at novel con. Yeah, I don't know. If there's a novel con, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. God, be pretty cool though, especially like a. Can you imagine what a signed first first print of a Lord of the Rings by Tolkien would. Okay. That would be nuts. There's like, you know, those old book, like signed first editions of, of like some John Steinbeck or like yeah. some, those things are so cool. Like I yeah. would never sell that, but be, that's like history. You would just have like, you always see like, a, <clears throat> like American pickers or yeah. like yeah. lawn stars or something like, Oh, my uncle knew this guy and he did some work for him. So he signed this for it. It's like, why are you selling that? man? <laughs> That's I, I do, worked uh, with this guy bucks. at the water park. I worked with this dude at the water park that <laughs> was like 30 something years old and working as like a top slide patroller. But he was adamant that his grandma <laughs> in Toronto in a safe had Action Comics number one, like the first appearance of yeah. Superman, which is in like shitty condition worth half a million dollars. And I'm like, I was like, are you sure you have that one? I was, I'm pretty sure you don't have that one. Like it's, it's probably some other one. Like you must be making a mistake. Nope. It's Action Comics number one. I hate him. I hate that guy. Because I'm like, there's no way you have that. I know. Comic. Like, there's no way you have a, a million dollar comic and you're working <laughs> and you're... at the water park. Yeah. I know you like your grandma does not have that in a safe. How do you know though? I know yeah, okay, I don't know. <laughs> and that's probably why I'm pissed. And that's the intrigue. That's <laughs> so why I'm we're like... still friends to this day with that guy. <laughs> that's why I keep him in, in the loop. Yeah. I try to stay friends so he leaves me in his I gotta put my damn dog down. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. He's getting too old. I'm <laughs> sick of him. Sometimes that happens. Never yeah. fun. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't want that. It depends on <laughs> how good of a grab you get. Anyway, he's, I, I, he's so cute. You want to choke him out? <laughs> you ever get that feeling that you just want to choke a dog out? <laughs> I want to anyway, hurt stuff I this love. Gets, uh, before this gets a little too disturbing. Okay. <laughs> I will uh, let you go for the evening. Thanks, man. It was actually a pleasure. I can't wait till we can do yeah. another one. Yeah, and then we'll get ours going. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. Yeah, so uh, for the constant listeners of the Always Moving podcast here, Dushin and I are talking about starting our own podcast, which will just be us bullshitting the whole way through. And Yeah, similar up. to this one with like some more preparation, some more games, something like that. Yeah, like our five hours of preparation for this wasn't enough. <laughs> so we, we'll have to put a little more extra work. But yeah, so uh, be on the lookout for that stuff. Dushan, I want to say thank you. Episode number nine of the Always Moving podcast. This guy right Nuff. over there. New old Nuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'll preview uh, for episode Dees. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be sweet, man. I even say episode Dees in episode Dees. <laughs> All in French, buddy. Um, anyway, thank you again, Dushin. And for everybody, this has been the Always Moving Podcast with your host, Lyndon Savanto. Let's keep this thing rolling. Thanks, buddy. See you, everyone. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs>